My name is Philip Duffield and I am a pedagogical consultant here at It's Learning. And what this means is that I support teachers and organizations uh, in implementing digital teaching tools and strategies to support and improve educational outcomes. I'm fortunate enough to work in the higher education and international team, and I'm a former high school teacher from Western Australia, in total with over 10 years of experience in youth and adult education. So let's have a look at the focus of today's presentation. Today I will discuss strategies that organizations can implement to improve teaching and learning predominantly with technology. Uh, for today's webinar, I always start with an agenda to let you know what we're going to work through. Uh, we will uh, firstly introduce who the expected audience of this presentation is. There's been a healthy mix of existing users and potential new customers, and I want to try to cater to both of those audiences or both of those camps. Uh, secondly, I will walk you through some practical strategies which organizations can implement to improve educational quality. There's four main strategies that I'm going to show you today, and they range from things that individual teachers can implement today through to more conceptual and strategic decisions that can be implemented within an entire school. Uh, the third item on the list is a presentation of the actual It's Learning solution with a focus on the strategies implemented. This is where I'll show you the It's Learning platform and how teachers and students are supported in improving educational quality and using the strategies that I presented in number two. Uh, for existing users, you may see some features or areas that you have not yet explored. And for new users, you'll see how it's learning supports key educational processes. I'll give a small introduction into some examples from existing it's learning customers. And I'm a bit biased here. I'll focus on implementations that I myself have been involved in and can speak confidently about. And I'll walk you through some of the decisions and usage that they have made with our solution. And finally, I'll host a question and answer segment at the conclusion of the presentation. Now, joining this question and answer session will be Mr. Helge Rogenstad, also located here in Bergen, Norway with me. And he can offer additional insight from his experience in working with international customers and working within higher education as well. Okay, who is this webinar for? Today's webinar is written for pedagogical leaders, technical leaders, teachers, uh, heads of organizations and departments who are looking to improve teaching and learning with the use of technology. Now, we've had interest from organizations that relied solely on Microsoft Teams or Google for Education, but are looking for tools specifically designed to support teaching and learning. Uh, we also know that teachers are looking for new ways to solve challenges that come about with distant and hybrid education models. So maybe you have an existing learning platform or learning management system, but you're finding that it doesn't quite meet the needs of today's teachers or students. Or maybe you're looking for some new ideas in, uh, for an existing It's Learning user and, and how you can support your students. Uh, if so, you are in the right place. Okay, uh, strategy one that I wanna get into is uh, the objective of improving educational quality is supported by a significant number of people at every organization. I want you to think about how each one of these people can use the LMS to support and improve educational outcomes. So me personally, I like to look at the role of a curriculum writer or a content producer. The curriculum or learning goals are the backbone of the whole educational journey. Curriculum writers can support teachers by ensuring that they have suitable assessment opportunities for the learning goals. Now, as a former teacher, I know that the main challenge is often, uh, isn't about setting up the goals themselves, but it's often about being able to assess and measure effectively whether the goals are achieved. So by working side by side in the LMS, curriculum writers, content producers, the people who write lesson plans or, or modules of, of work, uh, and teachers can best support students and improve those educational outcomes. 
Now the system should also allow for administration like the IT team to implement strategies, to add new tools, to connect and integrate other services. It should allow parents and guardians and of course students to work towards improving their own education. So it's important to find a solution that can allow all of these people to collectively um, uh, support education. I don't like systems where administration and IT are on the outside or, or where parents and guardians, they can't help actively support the students. So it's really important that you involve all of these key stakeholders. Now this one is aimed a little bit more at teachers. Uh, the LMS needs to support teachers in reducing, in reusing, and repurposing their learning content. So it must save teacher time and allow collaborative working both uh, amongst teachers, but also amongst students. So when I'm thinking about reduce, I'm thinking about reducing the administrative tasks and teacher workload. Anything that we can do to reduce the work and the, the paperwork and the compliance that a teacher needs to do gives them more time to focus on the relationship with the students and improving educational opportunities. So this can mean simple things like by making an integration with a web conference tool, teachers can easily share the web conference link and not have to uh, spend time communicating with students and sharing the link and sending them an email and, and things like that. Uh, I mentioned earlier connecting third-party applications or learning tools. Again, this is something that administrators can do to help ease the workload of teachers and make it easier and faster for them to get the content and the assessments that they need. When I think about rebuilding, I want to build on existing content and lesson plans and resources and activities within your school. So as we approach the end of the school term, I encourage teachers and departments and faculties to get together to share their course spaces, to reflect collectively on what went well, and to collaboratively build the next versions of their course. Uh, well, I like to think of this as building blocks. Every year, every semester, the course is getting better and better and better as things are tweaked and reflected on. Now, I remember this light bulb moment when I was uh, implementing at a significant international school where the maths department looked at each other and suddenly realized that using an LMS and collaboratively building their grade nine math course uh, could reduce their workload by 70% if they divided the modules and each took responsibility for one of them. Another benefit of collaboratively building courses like that is it allows teachers to pick their focus areas and to really focus on things that they like and do. I remember I was a social studies or something, Kunskap or lots of different ways of putting it, teacher, and that's a broad subject area, history, geography. Uh, so mixing those together and allowing me to take from teachers who were experts in economics and for me to give in 20th century history was a great way for me and other teachers to work together. And that's a huge benefit that you get with an LMS system that's well implemented at your school. Now repurpose. In this time of distant and hybrid education, a lot of teachers already have end of term assessments, they have tests. How can these be repurposed, broken down into formative assessment opportunities one real easy way is to take your end of semester test and using the It's Learning copy questions feature, just copy a few of them or draw some of those questions randomly into a formative test and give students the opportunity to practice and do a check mid semester about where they are and how they're doing. Uh, another option of repurposing is using the It's Learning library to find content that's been shared by other teachers, other its learning organizations, and open educational resources, which are pre-populated into your library. Okay, strategy three focuses on provide and also act on insight and reporting. Now the shift to distant and hybrid education has caused significant challenges. Teachers are losing the ad hoc opportunities to catch a student in the hallway, to observe a group, and to monitor the class and the body language that is missed when observing a student through a tiny little five centimeter picture on your computer screen 
uh, in Zoom. So the reports found in your LMS can be a significant aid in bridging some of these gaps. So later in the presentation, I'll show you how its learning provides insight into student activity, but also allows teachers and administrators to act on that insight. Because you can have all of the information in the world, but if it doesn't allow the teacher or the student or the grade level leader or the faculty, head of faculty to reflect and act on that activity, uh, on that learning, then it's essentially useless. So that's crucial here is the, the reporting needs to have a, a process to act on and implement change. Uh, you're, you're collecting heaps of information when students are using the LMS, so it's really important that we can adjust our teaching strategy and meet the needs of the students. So I'm excited to show you some examples of that. Now, finding ways to increase the activity and engagement is essential to the learning process. So we know that students are learning most when they are actively engaging, when they're doing things with the skills and the knowledge being presented to them. We also know that this is much harder over video conferencing solutions. So as educators, we need to find ways to engage students and make them active, make them create, make them collaborative in small groups, in bigger groups and whole class groups. So we support this through a, a whole range of tools one that I highly recommend is the ePortfolio tool. Uh, we also have a whole range of assessment possibilities, customized learning paths, and connections with productivity solutions such as Office 365 and Google for Education. So the project feature is another great tool for breakout rooms, for group assignments, and ad hoc learning opportunities with plenty of collaborative opportunity built in so students can create their own projects and invite other students in and work on on tasks together if you're an existing it's learning user do make sure you check out the projects tool it should be findable under the groups menu in your your top menu of its learning now flipped classroom practices work well in both distant and face-to-face -face teaching what we're seeing is a is a rapid deployment of flipped classroom and blended learning uh, pedagogy right now. By asking students to read, take notes, review, and gather information uh, outside of class hours, teachers can then use the limited amount of time that they have with students to really push the student toward higher level thinking skills. Teachers can observe within the breakout rooms, whether it's in Microsoft Teams or, or Zoom, um, they can assign group collaborative tasks and they can set up a range of individual small group and whole group learning experiences. So as educators, we need to challenge ourselves of how can we constantly as much face to face time as we get with the students be pushing them to those higher order thinking skills that analyzing the reflecting evaluating that top end of the pyramid where the, the most learning occurs. Okay, so I hope you got some value out of those four strategies to improve teaching quality. For now, I'll move the presentation into section three, which is a presentation of the It's Learning Learning Management System and some of the key features that can be used to improve educational quality. Now, again, I'm customizing this for existing users of It's Learning, but also trying to help uh, new users of It's Learning to understand what what the actual solution is and, and what it can do. So to answer that question, when people ask me, what, what is it's learning? What are you actually offering them? I like to show them this wheel of teaching and learning processes. This stuff will be familiar to anyone who's been in the classroom in the past 10 years. Things like planning, engaging, teaching, assessing, reflecting. These are the things that teachers, heads of faculty are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. The cycle, it's a continual cycle. The cycle begins at planning. Teachers are organizing their content. They're making sure they have enough activities and content to meet the learning objectives. They're, they're time planning. Uh, they have a limited number of weeks in the semester and a limited number of contact hours. They're dividing those um, blocks. And what I really love about its learning is when you're doing this task, you're also communicating that to 
the parents, to the students, and to other teachers who are in your course. So you're, you're kind of getting two benefits out of one action uh, by communicating that plan. And that's something that I'll show you here. Uh, we're, as teachers, we're also engaging with students. We're making meaningful content where we're linking to applications and activities. And this content can be self-created, it can be collaboratively created with other teachers, or it can be used from the library and the internet. Remember, reuse. Um, now, of course, teachers spend a lot of time in this purple quadrant to the right, and that is the physical act of teaching. So using chosen strategies such as blended learning, project-based learning, and giving you a range of uh, tools to save time and focus more on your students. So we offer tools for assessment because you want formative assessment opportunities, you want end of term assessment opportunities to give points and scores, but you also want to monitor the learning process and be able to tweak right along the journey. So I'm excited to show you some of the ways that these assessment tools work within its learning and, and give some tips to those existing users who are joining us today. Now, reflection is crucial both for teachers and for students in the learning process. As when I was a teacher, any time you could get students to reflect on what they're doing, what they know, what they could do better next time was, I thought, so crucial to the learning process. So I'm excited to show you some of the ways that our solution encourages uh, both reflection and action. Uh, finally, we have reporting. This is crucial for teachers. Um, this is crucial for students, but it's also crucial for grade level leaders, uh, the leaders of whole organizations. So again, reporting needs to be actionable, support decision-making processes, and, and I hope I've, I've clarified what its learning is, a, a toolbox to support these processes within your organization. Uh, these tools, uh, sorry, tags that I've added on the side of the presentation plan, engage, teach, report, I'm going to use these and tag my uh, presentation so you can see which area of the teaching process is related to. So I'm now going to get into its learning. I'm going to show um, the very first part of engaging students. And, and uh, I love to hear our UX team, our user experience team talk about this because the very first step to engaging students is providing good usability. I want you to notice the way that information is spaced well across the screen. The page isn't overloaded. You're not gonna find thousands of links in a row. Uh, and you'll find this throughout its learning. And, and this design is an awareness of what the user experience team called cognitive load and not overloading the student, not bombarding them with information and allowing the student a nice overview and control of the information that they see. So I want you to see how this is welcoming to students. They have a range of courses that they participate in and the design gives the user the most important information. So the course card is showing the uh, number of tasks and number of new announcements within that course. So instantly when they log in, they can see where the activity is happening. Is it in English? Is it in corporate law? Is it in uh, language and theory and practice? And the other view, which students and teachers can choose to use themselves, and it's learning remembers this view, is the updates tab. One other thing I want to say about the course cards is students and teachers really like how they can rearrange and redrop them around and, and kind of manage like you do in a physical notebook. So on to the updates tab. Uh, the updates page gives users a list of all of the tasks that they're responsible for in chronological order. So this is the teacher's view and we can see the activities that our students have been completing and students can see the the tasks that they're set they're responsible for so number one question i think during this time of distant education is what do i have to do today and this makes it very clear for the user it's all here on their login page now the updates stream gives an overview of all announcements and interactivity within a user's courses 
and gives students a, an easy overview of what's happened since I last visited. If they're not in the physical classroom, if they don't have engagement with other students and teachers, this uh, aggregated view will give the student that uh, information of what's happened since they last visited. Uh, in this example, a teacher has just pasted in a link from YouTube, a teaser video, trying to get students engaged, giving them a task to do, a low-level thinking task of, of just watching a video, answering a question, making a comment uh, before the next class. So really easy to engage the students in that way. Now, most organizations that I work with, they uh, import their calendar events, their classes, their workshops, their tutorials into its learning. And this is a huge pedagogical value because when you have the timetable in your system, in your learning management system, teachers can supplement those events because typically an event says, you should be in this classroom at this time. But teachers can supplement that, add to it. And in this example, the teacher has placed the Microsoft Teams link using the Microsoft Teams button right there in the calendar event and created that team and students know exactly where they need to be. So super easy. Uh, it's learning has a number of communication tools and these are located in the top corner. Again, really easy to use, very similar to other uh, platforms and solutions that students are using today. The chat-like messaging system supports both synchronous and asynchronous communication. And it's a powerful pedagogical tool for student-to-student -student chatting. Uh, group chats, teacher announcements to their course group, and organization-wide announcements. So teachers can enable a small group or a whole class to chat during and after class. So sometimes your face-to-face -face or, or virtual meeting ends abruptly or the time ran out, and you can continue the dialogue going in the chat. Um, so we know that good and regular communication is crucial to online and blended learning. So it's important that it's learning places these front and center to allow uh, teachers and administrators to have consistent and clear communication out to students. Okay, I'll transition into the It's Learning Plans tool. And I don't have the graph here, but we've seen a huge increase in the use of plans over 2020. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, teachers are telling me that since they've started using it, even once they go back to face-to-face -to -face, um, teaching, they will continue using this because they've had so much value out of the way that it allows teachers to structure their course, communicate objectives, and scaffold learning. So the first view of the plans that I want to show you is, is that automatic link that's made between a calendar event and the course plan. So just by the calendar events coming into its learning and a teacher or group of teachers collaboratively building their plans, uh, those are linked together. So it tells the student not only where do I have to be, but what is due. Uh, assignment one, group two, and what are the plans, the relevant unit outlines that are going to be used during this lesson. So super easy. Uh, and again, you've got that Microsoft Teams link that was very easy for the teacher to create within the event. Another view that I want to show is the, um, the plans of within the course overview page. So here, a student or a teacher using the student view has logged into their language teaching course, and they're going to see the plan, the relevant for today's lesson or this week's workshop, and they're going to see it right there on the home page uh, and have easy access to their curriculum. Of course, they can see the full semester's plan or go back in time. Maybe they've been ill or maybe they want to study ahead and they don't want to focus on the now. So they can use the plans tab in the top menu to navigate that way. But today I want to show the big start button and show you how the teacher can organize and, and structure their learning. 
So we call this the play plan and it's a full screen view. So it works really nice on an iPad or a, a tablet. And it's a full screen view of the current module or topic. Now, I, I always recommend to start with a description of what students will be able to do or what the plan or the lesson is about. And I want to show you how it's learning allows teachers to scaffold the learning. So up here in the top right corner, of your screen. The play plan allows students to go next, next, next to the different resources. And by dragging and dropping, teachers can influence the order of or the sequence of learning. So they can start students off with uh, more basic, easier to understand content, and they can move students through to assessments and collaborative opportunities. So super powerful in scaffolding your learning and, and really interesting for uh, thinking about instructional design. So I am a true believer that all good learning designs and uh, learning design starts with the objectives. Um, these objectives are typically from your national or state curriculum and are pre-imported into its learning or your school or your course has uh, individually imported their own objectives or, or created their own objectives. I like to present the objectives because it tells students why they should be doing this and, and what it is they're expected to do at the end of the lesson. I remember my first years of teaching where I would just ask students to do things and to complete activities, but they didn't have that roadmap of what the outcome was or when at the end of the semester, I've been successful if I can do these 10 things. So I, reflecting back on my earlier practice, I, I wish I had this type of functionality and I wish I made the curriculum more live and more involved in the learning process. So this is really important. I think there's students today, they, they, want, they, they want to know why they're doing this and what they're expected to do. So it's important in design to make this clear and center. So let's have a look at the first resources within the um, lesson or the module. Now, typically a new module will start with some content about a new topic. And remember how I mentioned reuse material as much as possible. So in this example, a teacher is sharing a lecture recording via the It's Learning page tool. The page is great because it's easy to design, it's easy to embed and, and make it good looking. Um, and video, of course, is an important medium, but I've added some reflective questions because I want to push my students into those higher levels of thinking that assessing, the reflecting, the evaluating as they watch my lecture. I don't want to just say, hey, watch this 15 minute lecture. Because again, what's the student expected to be able to do after watching that? So I like to add some reflective questions and give them something to think about before we meet in the next lesson. And it's learning also includes things like a, a poll functionality. So you can add some interactivity to this. Again, it's kind of adding more to that watch this lecture by forcing them to reflect on some questions and by encouraging them to engage with others and, and do an anonymous poll that we can use in class and reflect on. Uh, I mentioned that the page is super easy to use. Um, it, you don't need to be a designer, which is great because I'm not much of a designer, but it allows you to easily make attractive looking content. Uh, one of the ways that I mentioned of an IT administrator or the administration can uh, connect its learning to third party applications. Now, two examples that I show here are Kaltura and Panopto. And these are two popular video hosting solutions that many of our uh, of its learning customers use. And these are so well embedded that they're found easily within the its learning editor or, or toolbar. So if your organization is using these third party video hosting solutions or video conferencing solutions or uh, content tools, more than likely they can easily be used and accessed right within the editor. So you as a teacher, you don't need to be 
technical and set up these advanced configurations. Uh, navigating through to the next piece of content, I've asked the students to watch a video and reflect and do a poll question. Uh, but now I'm going to share with them a PowerPoint file, a pretty typical task of, for any of today's teachers. And with our Microsoft and Google partnerships, it's learning has a powerful displaying and live editing of these files. From a student's perspective, it's, it's kind of annoying to have to download these files every time. Um, if you're using this today, I, I would encourage you to try giving students edit rights to these content. Ask students to make their own slides and to share with other students. Make this collaboratively just by editing the permissions and giving students the edit right. Uh, in our lesson design, we've provided students with a variety of material to understand new concepts. And now we'll share an asynchronous discussion forum to allow deeper thought and contemplation. This tool is useful for building community, uh, intellectual exchange, and for asking students to think about something that they can't instantly answer live on a Zoom call or in the physical classroom, when you want students to think and reflect and, and be more thoughtful in their response. Uh, of course, teachers get a nice report to see who's posting, who's engaging in the conversation. So that is um, easy for the teacher to act on. And discussions allow students to work asynchronously. They can reduce teacher workload by allowing students to support each other or to learn from the conversations that are happening within the LMS. Again, we make it really easy to reuse content. In this example, I found a good video that I liked on YouTube, uh, Vimeo, sorry. I grabbed the URL, I pasted into that embed tool, and then it's right there live in the platform without the distraction of going off to a third party site. Uh, this module will end in an assessment, and this is a group activity. So it's learning, again, communication, very important. We've provided the communication tool right within your assignment tool. So students can collaborate, uh, communicate live while completing the assignment. To give you an overview of some of the deeper look at some of the formative and assessment and summative assessment options, I want to introduce you to a few options within its learning. Now, the task is typically something that's done offline, such as participation or an observation or a presentation or an end of module checklist that students will self complete. And this is a really powerful feedback tool for the teacher to give feedback to students. Uh, the assignment tool is used anytime you want the student to submit digital work. Now, traditionally, this could be an essay, but a lot of opportunities to use audio, video, e-portfolios, third-party tools and apps out there that you ask students to use, and really supporting formative assessment processes, providing feedback, allowing the student to reflect and act on the feedback and develop their um, competency or skill. Uh, the test tool, digital testing for practice tests, for summative assessments, for pre-unit knowledge check. I really like this test tool. And again, I'd encourage you to take use of that copy question functionality, copy the test, edit it, modify it a little bit, remove some of the important questions, and give them to students to uh, practice in the, the middle of your coursework. And of course, there's a whole range of other collaboration and feedback uh, tools such as messaging, blogs and portfolios, discussion forums, and individual learning plans within its learning. The assignment tool is perhaps the most commonly used tool, and it's used anytime you want students to submit that digital work. And it's super popular because it supports so many different ways of working. It's great for formative assessment. And if you haven't tried it yet, the peer assessment and student self-assessment, really easy ways to just push students a little bit higher in those thinking order skills. And 
things like collaborative or co-authoring of documents and anonymous submission. And I just want to point out how easy it is. You just tick the box um, and, and away you go. So uh, for those of you existing It's Learning customers, peer assessment, a great place to get started on some of those higher group, uh, higher order thinking skills. Now, we, we also have this uh, time saving feature, which I personally, I don't think the product team says this, but it's called the digital photocopier, or that's what I've called it. And this feature takes a Microsoft or a Google document and creates a unique copy for each individual student or group. So really good for distant collaborative writing. And I'll show you an example of that now. In this example, the teacher has given uh, John or all students a template document. They want the students to answer three questions in Microsoft Word. Um, and, and teachers can really let their imagination run wild with this functionality where students work individually within a template or within small groups. Uh, so think about the possibilities when you create tasks that allow students to collaboratively author and live authoring with that chat functionality, heaps of potential uh, in distant and blended or hybrid education. So after the submission of the work, uh, students, for the most part, appreciate uh, formative feedback on their hard work. Um, using the Word Online functionality, teachers can comment and highlight and annotate the student's work. Uh, they can send it back to the student for resubmission and, and have a dialogue within the work itself. And video and audio feedback is another really nice tip to personalize learning, to continue communicating with students directly within that assignment tool. So great way for teachers to record their voice or to record themselves via their computer's webcam and share feedback directly with students. And if you want to personalize learning from a distance, this is a nice way to get started with it, to provide students a 30 second clip of some personalized feedback um, without any additional software, really easy to get going with. Uh, I mentioned peer assessment. Again, if you haven't used it before, I do suggest uh, really powerful for pushing students up in that pyramid. Uh, fantastic for challenging students to assess another's work. Uh, creating your own work is one thing, but assessing a student against the objectives, a whole nother uh, ball game. So at the due date, the students receive a new task, and that task is to assess their peers. Uh, and teachers have a full overview of who's assessing who, and the teachers have the final uh, assessment and, and potential there. But students can use the included rubric, and, and it really, like I said, powerful to force students to reflect on their peers' work and provide feedback. Uh, you can do this anonymously as well. That's, that's an option where the students can provide feedback without knowing who each other are. So uh, consider that option. I mentioned earlier the, the learning path, and there's so many strategies that this can be used with. Something like a gatekeeper, where you want to hide content before a specific result is achieved. Or you might want to offer students a choice in, in the type of content they, um, they consume. Uh, so it's great as an exit ticket for the final 15 minutes of class or five minutes of class where you want students to complete something prior to the end of an online learning session. And in distant education, um, it's, it's a good break during that Zoom video conference to uh, use this tool. Another view of the page, um, the learning path here, uh, guiding the student through a series of elements. And, and great for an activity to complete before the next class or, or, or review. So in this sequence, the student has uh, a lot of content. They've got Prezi images, lyrics to a song, and after this, they'll complete the uh, end of unit test. So the ePortfolio, um, again, if you haven't checked this out, a, a, an easy way to start is to ask the students to create their own ePortfolio and reflect on their learning processes of the current topic. 
to write an article in their e-portfolio, and it's, it's really well protected. Students can use a password or they can um, make this a personal portfolio that only they can modify, or they can choose to share it only with the, the, the participants in their courses. All right, finally in the presentation, we have um, actionable insights. Now in every courses menu, you have the 360 reports, um, and these reports are divided into three categories, the activity report, the progress, and the grades. This report, the activity report, gives a look at student activity within the course in the past week. And what I think teachers love is the ability to act directly on this content. So we can see that Caroline has not logged in recently. We can instantly send her a message, reach out to her and offer support. The progress report is I think what teachers like the most. Uh, we can see at a, at a glance the whole class or the whole course and how students are progressing through the activities and the resources. And again, we can deep dive into those to find more information and to act on this information. Uh, in addition to the 360 reports, we also give a lot of information that's actionable um, here in the status and follow-up section. One of my favorites is the alignment report because as a teacher, it helps me to make sure that the resources and activities meet the learning outcomes. And it challenges me to reflect, do I have enough activities, enough opportunity for students to meet the objectives? So here you can see this particular objective, it's added to three plans and it's used in a range of uh, resources and activities. But some of these other objectives aren't connected to any content yet. So maybe I'm not providing enough opportunity for those students to meet those objectives. Uh, just a sneak peek here, I focused earlier on student and teacher and faculty level reporting, but It's Learning also has a full data warehouse, which is available as advanced reports within the It's Learning solution or via your own BI or, or business intelligence solution. So higher uh, organizational level reporting available. Okay. I do have some examples from existing customers that I would like to share. The first example that I am, am very proud of, and I think this organization is doing great things, is Spark Schools in South Africa. Now, this is a network of 20 private schools in South Africa. Um, uh, in this photo, you can see one of their learning labs where students rotate throughout the day to do some digital content. And one focus of theirs, one thing that they've done really well is providing teachers all of the content, material, and activities needed to be successful. So the centralized curriculum team, they create and they curate content, they supply resources, and they create engaging checks for understanding that allow the teachers to review the progress of the individual students. So I really like this approach of supplying teachers with a ready-to-go toolkit. Um, They've done this by focusing on some of the non-core subjects first, and over time, they're building more and more content and, and repurposing it and reusing it. Uh, so the, the, the method that Spark Schools use really allows the teacher to focus on individually the students. They can use those checks for understanding. They can break up and divide the students and really tailor the, the remediation and support individually because they have that whole toolkit there. It's a, it's a fantastic model. Another example that I would like to present, if, uh, if there's anyone out there who is looking for an open discussion from two prominent professors and lecturers, please look no further than the Stockholm University webinar on adopting their teaching in the time of COVID. Uh, within this webinar, you'll get insight into the typical challenges that a large university faces when rapidly moving to distant education. And some of the discussion points in the webinar are about overcoming communication barriers between faculty and students, uh, taking attendance in large courses, reflections on how to further drive the transition to blended learning, and moving uh, end of semester assessments and exams to be online and, and spreading them out throughout the semester. 
Uh, so some really great conversation about uh, the use of discussion forums and how when moving to discussion forums, it allowed more open communication and students, instead of reaching the teacher individually after the lecture or via email, they could all support and collaborate live there in the forum. Another great idea that I saw was the use of the assignment tool as the attendance tool with large lectures. So there's an example given where um, attendance transitions from being present, you know, being physically available in the virtual or physical lecture hall to actually engaging with the material presented in the lecture, asking students whether they understand and, and being able to assess any gaps that they have. So it takes this administrative job of taking attendance and elevates it to be this high value pedagogical activity. So if you go to the It's Learning um, uh, website and search for Stockholm University, you should find this um, presentation from August 2020. A uh, really good watch and only 20 minutes or so. So powerful watching there. Okay, uh, conclusion just before we wrap up to the question and answer section. Now, I think the first point that I want to make is that uh, a learning management system is not going to replace quality teaching in improving learning outcomes. But however, it will make them more efficient in building relationships with students, in saving time and administrative tasks, and achieving learning goals by using innovative tools and processes. So uh, finally, I would encourage organizations to bring stakeholders together to improve the quality and think about how uh, continually reflect on how the stakeholders, parents, administration, IT, how they can actively work toward improving uh, teaching and learning. So those are the final parting words that I have for you. Now, um, I, I'm aware that some people did send some questions and answers uh, prior to the webinar, so thank you to those. Um, the, the formal part of my presentation is complete, and I would like to now welcome my colleague Helge Rogenstad, who has been working with the questions and the chat functions, um, and he'll now join us to help moderate this question and answering session. So Helge is a key account manager at Its Learning, and what this means is he works closely with existing customers to implement and achieve their strategy and vision. Well, th thank you, Philip. Uh, it's, it's great to join you here and um, and meet all these uh, these delegates we have attending today. Uh, very strange, obviously, that it's not uh, face to face that it normally is, but uh, we live in these times, so it's um, it's great to be here and. Um, as you mentioned, I, I work in international sales and I meet some uh, customers uh, very often on a daily basis, pretty much. And um, uh, I'm happy to uh, to join today to obviously meet a few more, hopefully, and, and read out some of these questions we got in during your uh, presentation here. The first question is, could you share some practical ways in which teachers can improve teaching quality in distant education? Hmm. Sure. Uh, some practical ways which teachers can improve teaching quality in distant education. So I, I, um, a very good question and, and something that we're, we're always being asked. So some of the, the examples that I mentioned during the webinar were uh, reusing an end of semester test or, or repurposing that. And, and just copying and modifying for formative assessment processes. I really like that. Uh, I really like the collaborative co-authoring of uh, Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint. I think when you combine that with um, uh, breakout rooms in something like Microsoft Teams or, or Zoom, uh, you have a lot of potential there. Uh, and I think one maybe underexplored area is that that project space within its learning. Uh, so, you know, encouraging and, and educating students and in, in using that in driving their own educational opportunities. Um, what about you, Helga? Do you have, I mean, you get to meet a lot of uh, teachers and, and uh, organizations in, in implementing distant education. 
Sure, yeah. Actually, the good point you mentioned there about the projects tab, because I think it's it's a great tool, especially in higher education, where students actually can become, you know, uh, teachers in a way and sharing discussion forums and, and be able to work uh, with fellow students. So it's a great for universities, that uh, feature. Uh, but, but yeah, I thought when I read this question, I thought some, you know, like some stories, I guess, from, from you know, my customer meetings and such, it's actually a, a personal one um, because uh, a couple of weeks there, I had a meeting, a parent evening with my, um, my daughter is actually 13 years old and she goes to school here in Norway, secondary school. And um, I had the meeting with the teacher at just a regular parent uh, conference. And um, obviously in Norway, same as many countries around the world, it's been affected by the COVID situation and um, we've gone through lockdown measures. So for teachers, this has obviously been a massive challenge. Mm. And the teacher had you know, no difference uh, to anybody else, I guess. But what he found, and what I thought was interesting to share today was, um, he had, you know, during the COVID lockdown, he'd send a lot of content, as you said in your presentation, to the students that they can you know, watch uh, and then when he, when the students finally came back to school and they were allowed to come back, he said, well, why should I now stand in front of the class and just jabber on about, you know, teaching them from my side and, and not listening to what they have to say? So he, he flipped that sort of uh, work. So instead now he said, well, he sends out videos for the students to watch, um, you know, at home. And then instead of teaching them the regular way, he now works on the on one-to-one -one and in groups with the students at um, when they go into their face-to-face -face education. So I thought that was a great example so, uh, and a practical example on how students are, you know, get to, to work more one-to-one um, -one with the teachers using this technology, right? Mm. Yeah, that's a it's a good point. I remember um, in the the article with um, Spark Schools, they it really highlights how um, how good the teachers were at creating engaging content. And I think this is something that people are scared of because of the the competition with the way YouTube is run today. But um, they their teachers down there, without sort of formal training in this area, provided. A really nice, engaging content, and the students just loved being able to connect to their their teachers again. Yeah, um, yeah but, and another point here is is obviously the fact that um, you know, uh, as you said in your peer, you know, when you presented your peer um, assessment earlier, um, mm. the, you know, the, the students they are learning in the different ways, right? So. There's no one way to uh, educate um, students. And um, actually, when, when I learn myself, usually I go on YouTube, right? And I find if I can't understand the concept, usually I find somebody yeah. else to explain it better than the other person. And, and students today, they, they, they're doing the same. So I think it, you know, to utilize this online resources uh, effectively and, and realize as a teacher that you are might, might not be the best person to present this uh, anyway. So uh, so to find those great examples and then instead work with your um, the children and sort of flipping that uh, classroom is, is a great idea, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I was just checking through some of the questions here. We do have one, uh, where can I find the guides on some of these features that, that Philip mentioned? So. Very good question. Uh, I think the first place that I would look is the It's Learning Support Portal. Um, uh, we'll type it into the chat here, but that's at support.itslearning.com. And mm -hmm. on that page, you'll find guides for uh, administrators, for students, for teachers, you know, depending on what your role in that educational process is. And that's where you can really look through and find detailed information on how to use some of the features um that i presented yeah another question here then uh, philip is um a technical uh, question for you okay let's do it from a technical perspective i was wondering how difficult it is to get up and running from an existing lms to its learning is it fast 
Sure. So I think, uh, I mean, one of the, the key benefits of its learning is that it is a cloud-based solution, which means the actual creation of the site is, is, is quite quick. Uh, the creation of your secure walled garden that I like to call it. Uh, so the deployment of the site is, is pretty quick. Um, the, 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 the training of users is, is um, it's not non-existent, but it's, it's easy given the focus on ease of use. And, you know, like I showed, that big green button always tells you what you need to do next. Um, of course, we offer things like uh, single sign-on and, and user provisioning to connect to your student information system. So that will, again, further reduce the administrative load um, mm. and, and give students a, a good experience, you know, not using multiple accounts and passwords and, and that sort of thing, making it smooth and easy mm. yeah no, that's uh that's great and also um i guess the as you said the main thing that i always tell uh, prospective clients like this is that you know as a cloud service as you as you point out there's no uh, you know it can be up extremely quickly because all you really need is an internet connection right you, you don't need mm. to download any software there's no Thing things for you as a, as a as a user to you, do other than being a, um, you know accessing the internet basically. Mm. Then you have all these great tools that Philip has explained today at your fingertips. So I think that's the that's the main thing here. And, and as as you said on the integration side with SSO and um, if if you want to let's say that you want to integrate with your existing student information system because obviously you can provision users automatically etc and um, if you want to do that we have um, a consultancy team that can help you set it up or you can set it up yourself actually uh, we have a great website uh, which is uh, developer.islearning.com right and also have um, have that as well yeah so that developer.islearning.com great resource for the the IT team and the, the technical people who are listening today. I would like to thank everyone for joining this first breakout track. We've had a really good participation rate, really good questions before and after and during the webinar. So thank you for, for investing this time with, with us and me. Um, I very much enjoyed hosting this session. Yeah, thanks for attending everyone. It's been great.